Stephanie and I'm an exhibit developer here at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis and this morning I'm here to give you a sneak peek into Scooby-Doo Mansion Mayhem so you can come on inside with me. So as we enter the exhibit we are coming in through kind of a spooky cemetery and uh, right away we see the mystery machine parked here to let us know that mystery ink is on the scene and on the case. So what, why are they here? Why are we why did we just walk through this cemetery? Well, the Children's Museum partnered with Warner Brothers to create this exhibit, um, and we really wanted our visitors to feel like they were inside a Scooby-Doo episode and that they were helping the gang solve a mystery. And so one of the great parts about working with Warner Brothers is we got some really cool artifacts, like the mystery machine. This mystery machine is a screen-used mystery machine. It was used in both the Scooby-Doo uh, and Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed live action movies, and it's one of four that were used during filming. And here um, we find out a little bit about why Mystery Inc. was called to this place. And we are in a spooky mansion, and Mystery Inc., which is Daphne, Fred, Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby-Doo were called here to investigate a jewel thieving ghost that has been evading the local police force and was last seen entering this mansion. And so they are calling upon you, our visitors, to search for clues, to figure out who the jewel thieving ghost is, why are they committing this crime, and to unmask and catch that villain. And so we need your help throughout the exhibit to gather clues. Now, before we get into the mansion, another great part of working with Warner Brothers is that we got to bring some objects from their archives here on site. And these are really great for our um, families that have been fans of Scooby-Doo for generations. Scooby-Doo is over 50 years old. And so we have some of the original concept art for characters like Scrappy-Doo, whether you love him or hate him, you can come see some great Scrappy-Doo memorabilia. Uh, we also have some original concept drawings and the pitch board, the original pitch board that actually sold the show to the CBS network. So these are really awesome, iconic objects from the very beginnings of Scooby-Doo that you can come and check out, especially if you've been a fan for a long time. Now let's get started exploring the mansion. So of course, Fred, as soon as they got here, told the gang, let's split up to look for clues. And they all went to a different room to see what they could find. Um, this first room that we're coming into right now is the library and music room. And this is where Velma has come. Now, Velma is the tech savvy analyzer, brains of mystery ink. And she came here to do some research about, you know, the family. Why, you know, why is this person stealing jewels? And she came across green fingerprints kind of all over this room. But then Jinkies, she lost her glasses. So she needs your help to finish deciphering some of the clues she found. So you need to search the library and music room for green fingerprints, like ones that you might find here on the bookshelf. And then once you find them, there's usually something hidden nearby. So I just found this book that says 101 ghostly costume ideas. Hmm, I wonder what we could find. Oh, and we found a hidden compartment inside the bookshelf. Oh, and it gives us some clues as to maybe how the ghost is dressing up to look spooky. Now there's lots of other clues to find here within the library and music room. Remember, be on the lookout for those green fingerprints because something might be hidden nearby. You can analyze clues that Velma has found um, and use it to create a sketch of the villain's ghostly disguise and then compare it to Velma's to see how well you did. There's also some weird green fingerprints over here on this pipe organ. I'm not quite sure what they might lead to but i think if you are able to play this series of notes you might be able to find something oh well i didn't do such a good job maybe you all will do better than i did uh next up we are coming over where we see fred he is the leader of mr a he is also an expert trap builder and he found some mysterious green footprints that he followed into um, a type of tinkering workshop where the villain has been um, using his tools and, and plotting about his crimes. And so you can follow the green footprints um, and come into the workshop with Fred. 
Now Fred, of course, being the expert trap builder, has found lots of different things to help him build a trap to catch the villain, and there's two ways that you can practice your trap building skills. Right over here, you can take these magnetic ramps and you can build some different pathways from start to finish to see if you can get one of these balls all the way through your path and really work on your, you know, your tinkering skills so you can become a trap builder just like Fred. And of course, Fred has set up his own trap that he needs your help testing. And so over here, you can help set all of the different pieces of the trap by moving these different levers, pushing the buttons, raising up our net, and then once everything is set, once you get all of your green lights filled, you can press the button to activate and test the trap. And of course, we have some bait for our villain, a giant diamond, since he is a jewel thief after all. And then the last thing Fred came across in the tinkering workshop is this villain's tool bench. And if you are looking to solve the mystery and figure out who the villain is and their motives behind the crime, this is a really great place to explore because it is full of clues. There are crates that you can open, um, different things that the villain has put up on this board to see how things are connected, where this jewelry might be coming from. And if you look really closely, there might be some clues on these receipts inside of some of these crates. So definitely take a closer look at those if you're looking to solve the mystery. Now, of course, what uh, every villain in Scooby-Doo has ways that they are making their ghostly illusions. Um, it never, and nothing is ever quite as it seems. And so this is where you as the visitor can take on the role of villain to spook some of your friends and family. So we have lots of different effects here that you can turn on, things like activating if people laugh. Or, oh, that's a long evil laugh. Or making a, uh, red eyes glow inside of suit of armor. And if you come around this way, you might just be able to see where you're triggering those effects. So maybe you can lead one of your family members over here, then run around and speak them, uh, acting like you're the villain. And now we wound up in the Hall of Portraits. So this is where Daphne has come. And Daphne has come here to search for clues within the portraits. And she has found that, oh, there are some things not quite as they seem. Some of the portraits um, open and close, and there might be some clues hidden behind them for you to take a closer look. And now here in this portrait, we have found a safe, and Daphne has set up a tool to help you crack the safe. So if you turn the dial back and forth, and you find you know, the secret combination there, oh, you can open up the safe to see what's inside. Now, something that I do want to point out for our visitors that are really looking for a challenge, you might notice in each of these portraits, our family members are wearing a piece of jewelry. And if you need a hint as to what their jewelry is, you might want to look at their names. And if you are really observant, you should be able to find every single piece of jewelry hidden somewhere around the exhibit. So come in, take a close look and see if you can find all of them. All right, and now we're going to head over to Scooby and Shaggy's favorite spot in the mansion, which is the kitchen. Scooby and Shaggy are always a little spooked whenever the gang is investigating something like a ghost. And so they came here to the kitchen to get a snack and to kind of calm their nerves. And of course, Scooby's plate is empty. He's eaten everything. So Scooby and Shaggy need you to help make them some food, some snacks. And we have all kinds of fun, wacky combinations because of course Scooby and Shaggy don't just eat regular sandwiches, they eat sandwiches with sardines on them or pizza with pickles and potato chips and bacon. And so you can come and create your kind of own crazy snack. We have pizzas and sandwiches and ice cream sundae that you can make for them. And of course, all of our play food is still um, being cleaned regularly by our staff and we have hand sanitizer and wipes spread throughout the exhibit so that you can um, clean anything before you play with it if you'd like. Now if you're up for a, a little bit of a competition, we uh, have an interactive right over here where you can try to build the tallest sandwich 
for Scooby and Shaggy. There's two sides, so you can go head to head with one of your family members. And as you um, see the ingredients light up and press them, the faster you go, the taller your sandwich gets. So I won't go all the way to them, but you can see your sandwich growing and you can see how many ingredients you add and how tall you can get your sandwich. And like I said, you can compete against a family member to see who can build the tallest sandwich for Scooby and Shaggy. And of course, what Scooby-Doo episode isn't complete without an iconic chase sequence where the gang gets chased by um, a ghost. I'm gonna cut through here. And this is um, where you can become a part of the chase. So we have Scooby and Shaggy that are running away from a ghost and you can follow them and you can help them escape. So um, for this interaction, you just come and step on a circle and you use your hand to choose how you want to escape. You can choose arms only. If you're looking for a challenge, you can use your full body. And as Scooby and Shaggy run away, you'll see that um, Scooby is going to make a break for it and he's going to be far out in front of you and he's going to start crashing through walls leaving um, a shape for you to try to match to help uh, continue on the escape. So I'm going to put my arms down. If, I, if I'm not quite right, it's going to tell me. And you'll get a score based on how well you've done. So definitely come in. There is a uh, top five scores that show up at the end of um, the inter, uh, at the end of the chase. So if you're really competitive, you can see if you can get one of the top five scores for the day. And then one other um, thing I'd like to point out is that if you need some help looking for clues, if you're not quite sure, you, you need a few hints, we have some excellent mansion staff members that are here every day and they can help you kind of um, give you a few extra hints. They have some additional clues that they can show you and they also have some really awesome um, enhanced programs that you can take part in. So if you are, um, if you've solved the mystery of the jewel thieving ghost and you're ready for another challenge, you can join the case of the Pilfered Pumpkins. Um, if you really like designing tracks like bread, you can join our track design workshop. Um, they're offered throughout the day. They're included in admission. Um, so you can look on our website for times to find out when those are being offered. And so, of course, after you've, you know, looked for clues and helped the gang solve the mystery, it's time to come and celebrate with them. And so you can pick some different props out of this bin to pose for a photo op with the gang. And if, if you're feeling really um, fun with your family, you can even make yourself the villain being unmasked by Fred. Uh, you can take a photo with the gang, celebrate your success, and... Um, and have a great uh, memory of your time in Scooby-Doo. So Scooby-Doo Mansion Mayhem will be here through January of next year, uh, and we can't wait to see you and have you help us solve the mystery. Have a great day.